Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Njambi Rono. I am a developer advocate at Code for Africa, and it's really good to have all of you come. Thank you for sitting in for this session. Um, so just a bit of background, uh, Code for Africa is a civic tech organization that works to empower citizens um, by giving them access to actionable information. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly how uh, one of the ways that we do this. Um, so uh, we've had a wonderful two days here. We've learned quite a lot of things. Um, we've shared knowledge, we, we've grown our insights, and um, I think my mandate here this afternoon is to challenge and encourage and implore us to um, build more tools that uh, directly impact the communities that we live in, and if possible, if these tools can be replicated elsewhere around the world, then even better. Um, and um, so I'm going to talk about um, life and death decisions powered by CSVs, and I'm going to talk about one specific tool that we built in Kenya called Doji Doctors. Um, so this is a problem that we have, that access to proper healthcare is a basic human right. And while that is true, the World Health Organization um, estimates that about a third of the world's population has no access to even the, the most basic um, medicines that the people need. Um, and this essentially means that every year we lose about 4 million people just because we can't give them access to um, basic health care. Um, and so um, in Kenya, um, quack doctors are very common. And um, I have two stories to illustrate just how um, dire the situation is. And the first story is about my boss, Justin Arenstein, who's from South Africa. And um, in one of his business trips to Kenya, which is where the Code for Africa offices are, um, he got really sick um, and sought medical advice. Um, and he actually got treated, and he felt better. And after his business trip, he went back to South Africa. Um, but then the problem came when, um, when he went back to South Africa, he got even worse. And he visited his regular family doctor. And um, as protocol will suggest, um, the South African doctor requested to see medical records from his, um, from his treatment in Kenya. And so when the South African doctor's office um, contacted the Kenyan doctor's office, the Kenyan doctor's assistant was like, are you sure that this is the person that treated you? Because this is a vet. Um, yeah, uh, my boss had been treated by a vet. And it's, it's actually really funny. Um, we, we can laugh about it now because he's well and he lived to tell the story. But the truth of the matter is a lot of the people um, in rural Africa and most of Southeast Asia are not able to you know, live and tell the story. Um, they're either visiting quack doctors at any given time or they're getting misdiagnosed, you know. And so um, even for the population that is able to access um, healthcare, um, how, how sure are they that they're being treated by registered practitioners, you know? And how sure are they that they're being treated in uh, registered clinics um, that are legal, that, that are operating legally? Um, so this is why in 2013, um, Code for Africa, in partnership with one of the largest, uh, with the largest blue collar newspaper in Kenya, known as the Star, built a simple suite of web-based and SMS applications to help people um, do three things. One, check whether their doctor was a registered practitioner, um, and the second thing, check whether um, the whether the national health insurance covers their treatment at any given hospital, and if it doesn't, how much does it cover and what, how much do they need to top up, just so people don't, don't get embarrassed at the hospital or don't get turned away and, um, you know, maybe die um, just because they weren't able to prepare well in advance when they went to hospital. And the third thing it does is, um, because Kenya is big and um, sometimes you go to some parts of your country that you, 
you've never been to before and you don't know people and if you or your child get sick um, then what happens you know um, so it allows you to just enter uh, the name of a town that you've gone to and it gives you a list of um, it gives you a list of um, medical practitioners that you can go see and what their specialty is and uh, clinics that you can go to. Um, so I gave you one story. My second story, um, which uh, is going to explain and expound why um, this, the Star Health, this health portal became very famous around uh, the end of last year, is, um, is actually a very sad story. So in September of last year, um, a woman went to the police and she reported a case where she had been drugged and raped by an alleged gynecologist. And so when she came out and this story um, was somehow reported in the news, um, then many more women came out and said they'd also been drugged and raped by the same um, practitioner. And um, so when he was investigated, they actually discovered he was a quack doctor. He wasn't even registered to practice. And um, he had this um, clinic just in a town somewhere that wasn't even operating legally. And just because he put up a sign with his name and his specialty, then people had trusted him with their lives, you know? And many women had gotten raped and he got arrested. And this um, generated a public outcry. And as a result of this, um, the star um, started um, publicizing the platform and a lot of people used it. Um, I think in a span of three months, over 14,000 unique visits were recorded on the platform. Um, and this was, this was really good because all of a sudden people were coming onto the platform and asking, um, let me make sure that the person who's been treating me or the person that I'm suddenly going to visit is someone I can trust with my life. Um, and so uh, where did we get the data? So in Kenya, we have a Kenya medical um, and dentists, uh, Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Board, and they publish um, a whole list of all registered doctors um, who studied in Kenya and who studied abroad um, and have been registered to practice in Kenya. They publish it in, let's say, over 300, I think, yes, over 300 web pages. So each web page has a 30, at least of 30 doctors in it. Um, which isn't really ideal. And I mean, if I was someone who wanted to, you know, find out via SMS, say I had a feature phone, what would I do? Because this is, this is a truth. Yes, mobile phone prevalence in, in Africa is quite, um, is, is amazing. Um, stats put it at over 80% um, in Kenya alone. But then the reality is that much as um, mobile prevalence is that high, um, a lot of people still have feature phones, you know? And so a lot of content that exists on websites, ETC, still can't be accessed by a majority of the population. And this is why um, the Star Health portal um, was, was a really good um, sell to people because just by typing out um, your doctor's name and sending that to a short uh, code service, then you're able to get an SMS back saying, yes, Sarah is a registered um, pediatrician, for example, and this, um, this is her number and this is where she practices from. So you're able to tell um, is the clinic I'm practicing from, um, you know, like registered, and am I a registered doctor? Um, so we took data out of this, we built a scraper around it um, and collected all the data out of the web pages um, on this site and we put it in a spreadsheet um, and that was it. And so we decided to build a simple platform um, just to act as a GUI for, for this spreadsheet so people could query it and find out whatever it is they wanted to know. And then, um, so we did that. And um, 
just to create a crowd verification sort of system because a doctor could come and say, hey, you spelled my name wrongly, and so this is why people are not able to find me um, like in the SMS app or the web app that you guys have. We hosted it on Google Fusion Tables, and um, these cards make it very, like, very easy for people to these cards make it very easy for doctors, for example, to come back and say, um, so I see my address here and what it reads isn't what it currently is. So I moved places, my address changed. So they are able to then um, suggest edits either here um, on the email address, send us an email and say, so my records aren't right and we are able to reach out to KMPDB or they're able to reach out to K the medical practitioners board directly and say to them, hey, you need to change um, my records because they don't read right. And um, so it creates a sort of like virtual circle where um, at least we, we don't just give to community or we don't just take from the government like the data that they're giving, but we also give back to them by making sure that their records are up to date or that they are correct even. Um, which is really important, if you ask me. And so some of the things that have come out of this um, have been that um, last year, um, before the, the Star Health started reporting and um, promoting the platform, then they used to get about 20 requests per day on their site. But now they, they record up to 215 um, SMSs a day. Um, like to people querying um, the platform to see um, doctors' details, details about clinics and all these things. And that's really cool um, because it started out as a data experiment for the newsroom, but it's now become one of their main revenue sources, which is really awesome. Um, something else that came out of this was that um, in February, um, the Star Health was running um, one of the promotional uh, material on radio and um, one of the uh, main board members at Kenya Medical Practitioners Board had the advertisement during rush hour and um, so in, it led to a series of meetings and after that um, the government actually demanded that all boards that were responsible for registering health practitioners should create SMS tools around the databases that they have so that um, citizens can query their databases and find out if all health practitioners are registered, which is such a big win for us. I mean, we've already done it, but that the government saw a need to demand that each of these boards do that as, um, as a must-have, then I think that's a major win because we are driving change in the community. Um, just by building a very simple tool out of data that was readily available but wasn't accessible by all, then it created a demand for even better services by the people that um, offer these services. And that's a major win. Um, so some of the issues um, that we've come by are um, that we've realized um, as more and more people have continued to use this um, spreadsheet-based app, um, one of them has been that um, we need to have a system that lets us know where the red flags are. Um, and what I mean by this is, who are these doctors that people keep searching for but getting no results for, you know? Because the minute we know who these are, that's where the stories are. Because that's how we were able to even create more impact by outing them and getting them into jail or wherever it is that should be. Currently, we have no system to do that, but we are. We, we think it's really important to have that. And so that's something that we are actively working on um, at the moment. Another thing we are hoping to have um, is um, just a system. Uh, there's something that was done by Code for South Africa recently, um, which is a cohort um, under the umbrella of Code for Africa. And something they've been able to do is to um, find out um, what the regulatory body um, places medicine prices at. So how much should medicines cost vis-a-vis -vis how much are people buying them at in pharmacies? And they've been able to build a platform that then shows people um, you're either overpaying for your medicines or you're underpaying.
pain and your medicines are either generic or they have generics in them or they do not, you know. And that's something we are hoping to do. Um, the only downside is that um, we, our regulatory body in Kenya hasn't released this data yet. And so um, even if we find it, um, we might not be able to use it because it's not yet open. But we are hoping that because um, more and more everyday governments surprise us and they open up data that we recently didn't know they were going to open up. So we are hoping that they will do this for us. Um, a major win with Star Health has been that um, in January of this year, it was replicated by a newsroom in Nigeria, and it is now being used in exactly the same way it's being used in Kenya. They've taken it up and they're using it, and they also have the uh, medicine prices too on it as well, because they have um, the medicine prices published by the regulatory body, and this data is open, and so they, they have all of that. Yes, so thank you. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for me? Yes. Um, having taken the data from uh, the... Uh, Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Board. Thank you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite a mouthful. You, you said you had to do quite a lot of work to, to scrape that and put it into a usable form. Do you mm -hmm. make that data available as well as uh, publishing the site that allows you to query it? Yes. Um, so the data itself is available. Um, and um, I, can, I can point you to the GitHub page in, in a bit. Um, and I also forgot to mention that the simple GUI that we built around the spreadsheets, uh, we actually did that in Laravel. Um, it's simple, it works for us. Um, yes. So I suppose thinking about the delivery through uh, SMS. So um, how do people actually submit the names? Do they have to go to the website to do it? No, no, no. So this is how the SMS works. So on your phone, you just type out the SMS, and we give you a short code. Um, and so you send the SMS to the short code. And so the minute you send it, so it just queries the system, um, and it charges you. Sadly, it's not free. Um, you still pay for this, which is still a small charge. Um, so it sends you back an SMS um, with the information saying either uh, we found the name, here it is. And the good thing about the SMS service, initially uh, we had an issue where if someone had spelled out doctor as DR um, rather than the full name doctor, then it would bring an error. But we, in our test phase, we realized we had to change that. So whether you type out doctor, D, space, whatever, it, it just gives um, correct results. What it looks as at is the names, yeah? Um, and sometimes a name might be complicated, and so someone might misspell the name. So what it does is, if it doesn't find the exact name, um, but a majority of the characters are similar, then it gives you back like um, the similar um, results that are very similar to what you are trying to type out. Just giving room for human error at this point. Yeah. Um, there's also another issue that we realized in working with this data. The database only has 11,000, a little bit over 11,000 doctors. Um, either we really don't have doctors in Kenya because there's 44 million people against 11,000 doctors, which, which means there's such great need, you know, or that not all doctors are registered. And so wherever the disparity is, I mean, that's a story that someone should look into, you know. Um, yeah, so it's actually really shocking that for every 4,000 people, there should be one doctor. Um, so it's either true or most people haven't graduated or aren't registered. Although the, the board insists that they upload, they update their data on a weekly basis. Um, and something else they've started doing right now on their site is publishing um, uh, medical exam results on their site so people can track progress, you know, for medical students, which is interesting and awesome. It seems like you've now got a, a normalized set. You could do a, a look at the, where, what, what pockets of the area, you know, the country don't have representation as well. 
Yes, um, that's true. Um, there's there's also a, a lot of issues around how doctors get remunerated and um, like hardship areas and people not wanting to go work there and opting for private practice. It's it's a lot of issues. Yeah. Yes. And now that you've scraped all the data, how do you keep it up to date? Um, so what happens with the scrapers is they are automated. So they keep um, auto-scraping this data on a weekly basis. But um, in January of this year, we realized, was it January or February, we realized um, that our scrapers were not up to date themselves. And so like they hadn't been updating the data. And so that's something we become aware of and have had to go back time and again just to make sure they are working and the data is being updated. Yes. Have you reached out to that organization to see if they'd be willing to just give you like a data dump or anything, or did they just want you to scrape the website? Um, so when when these guys had the um, advert on radio about, there's actually a whole hashtag going on. It's called uh, Doji Doctors, and there's another Swahili one called Chunga Daktari Bandia. It means beware of fake doctors. And those are really, they're a big trend. Uh, they're a big hit in Kenya. So um, when they had this campaign on radio, um, they actually called us because they were aware of what you were doing before. And they said, um, so the guy uh, we had actually been working with was like, I don't know you guys. Um, we need to get um, all government boards to do their own SMS services. And so Kathy Ngishari, who's a code for Kenya lead, actually went and talked to them and um, tried to build a partnership with them. But it's really important to them that they build a standalone SMS service as an example to other health practitioner boards. Um, so they can all have their own SMS services. So it's a bit more complicated than we thought it would be, but still because the data is available online, we'll still keep using the scrapers for now. So yes, we've tried and um, sadly no, we, they can't give it to us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.